Hey guys, Dave Ashenbrenner here, and I'm very proud to say I'd like to announce our uh, Stinger is now available. Uh, we've made it in two versions, one for the E3D hot end and one for the stock CR10 and Micro Swiss hot ends. The E3D uh, it has the 16 millimeter mounting ring on the top, and I understand that fits most of their products that mount similarly, so it's a, just, a, I think, a matter of height. Uh, that you would adjust your, your uh, offset on your table. Um, and I want to say a few things about it. I've had um, a lot of people ask me questions about it. I'd like to clear that up right away. Everybody's asking me for numbers, uh, what the numbers are on it, the accuracy, the repeatability. It's not a sensor per se. It is a liaison between your sensor and your hotbed or your build plate. Um, the best way to describe it is it's a mechanical device and it has no, nothing to do with numbers or anything. It very accurately and precisely telegraphs the, the surface of your bed. It brings it up to whatever sensor you have. Uh, that's important because the, the actual uh, extrusion nozzle will touch your bed and it, wherever it touches it accurately senses the very spot where it's building the mesh to get the contour of your table correctly. Uh, there's no shadow areas on it where your, uh, say your sensor is mounted off to the side of it. There isn't a shadow off to the other side of your bed. And no matter what you have for a heated bed, if you have a, a, an electrical one, I know they interfere with the, uh, with the capacitive type. I believe they interfere with most of the, uh, most of the sensors out there. Um, but this keeps your sensor away from your bed, so it's not affected by heat, static, electricity, humidity, anything. The, it's, uh, it's remotely mounted, let's put it that way. Um, I've got a, a model right here I wanted to show everybody. This is actually a prototype, and we've made a number of changes to it. Uh, mainly the, the chassis, this would be the chassis part of it, is now made in stainless steel. Um, these are stainless steel bearings that it rides on. And uh, we, I'm, I, I'm going to say this will give you a lifetime of service. No matter what kind of uh, abuse you can throw at it, it will um, it'll bend the heat block or any other part on your machine if you happen to crash this into something. So we built it very sturdy. It's um, very well engineered, very well designed. I've done it over a long period of time. I built devices like this. Uh, over the years for different kinds of machines. I'm actually uh, very, very mechanically inclined and I've, uh, I've uh, built one of these for a plasma cutter. Uh, that's where the idea kind of uh, sprang from. And um, I'm just like all of you out there. I have a, pr a 3D printer and I don't want to screw with it every time I want to print something. So I've invented something that you turn your printer on and you Put your card in it, you select whatever program that you want it to print, turn it on, walk away. This will, you won't have to babysit it while the heat's up. Um, it's just a really nice product. It really takes the hassle out of, out of printing. Um, I didn't invent this to become rich and famous. I'm a, print, I'm a printer and if I could buy something like this, I would have went out and bought it and nothing like it existed. So. Um, I tried the capacitive systems, the um, induction systems, and there's, a, there's always a flaw of how it senses the proximity of the sensor to the bed. So we've kind of taken this and taken that out of the equation. Uh, this one you'll see, their stock CR10 end switch is mounted on here, and it just activates this. It's all ball bearing constructed, stainless steel chassis. Uh, this is a very highly engineered piece of equipment right here. And uh, it has a, a thick aluminum back, backing plate that mounts to your CR10. It comes in two versions, one completely assembled where you the mounting screws stick out of the back and there are through holes in the front where you stick your Allen wrench and you screw it right to your machine. All of the fangs and fans, everything that you need are included with it. You merely uh, disassemble this keeper ring assembly and 
uh, insert your E3D and bolt it in with these two screws. It comes with an ASA printed high heat resistant keeper. This is a keeper assembly for all the E3D products. I'll fit in this with the 16 millimeter mounting ring or mounting collar. Um, you can also, these mounting holes, you can also mount an inductive switch, inductive sensor to it. The metal plate that comes with it will come up and meet the induction switch with whatever offset it requires. It'll be fully adjustable. There's a cover that covers this up. The induction switch fits inside the cover and it uh, wires in just like all the other induction switches. We suggest the five volt uh, switch. They're very easy to install. Um, we also uh, give support with this. We have email support. There are many induction and capacitive systems out there on the market that this will work with. If you have a capacitive or an induction system on this, your sensor will mount on this. Uh, if you want to know what numbers this thing reproduces, you'll look at your sensor to see what that is. Uh, this is a very highly engineered product made on very sophisticated equipment. This is all laser cut. This is all laser cut and laser welded together. Um, when you receive your unit, you'll receive the package will include the fangs. There'll be a separate fang for each side, adjustable fangs. You'll get a uh, very attractive cover, a honeycomb cover with it in a hex case. Uh, and you'll have a uh, cover we call it a beehive cover that fits over the front of it, or a face cover that fits over it. All of this is included with the with the complete kit. If you opt for the kit version of it, where you you put this together yourself, you'll receive all the pieces here that make this that make this piece in my hand. You'll receive the STLs for the fang file. It's a single fan, double fang file. I'll show you more of that later. Um, and uh, all, the, all the necessary parts you need. We have aluminum spacing blocks. Once you have this installed, you won't need to adjust your table anymore. So we have aluminum tubing, 6061 aluminum tubing, none of this plastic stuff where you're, it's gonna be in contact with heat and a wire strain relief that fits on it with a couple tie wraps or zip ties. Um, everything's done very professionally. This isn't some cobbled up thing made in somebody's shed. This has been sent to a manufacturer who's uh, very capable of making high precision aerospace parts. So um, I'd like to maybe show you guys, take you over to the machine now and give you a little tour of how this is, uh, well, this in action, how this works. And uh, I have two versions. I have both of the version, this single fan, fang model. They're both in my room right now working. Um, I can't say enough about these. I'm a printer. Had I known there was something out there and I could have purchased it like this, I would have never gone through this big hassle of doing this. It was an extreme uh, effort on my part and on the part of my team. I have a team of people that worked on this and um, we really came up with something special for you. Um, if you have any questions about this, I'll be glad to answer them. But um, this thing should speak for itself. Let me take you for a little tour. Come with me. What you're seeing here is the uh, tip coming down um, after about a two minute heat up period. The uh, tip will now do what we call a base measurement. It comes down in the middle of the table. It's part of the homing routine, uh, homing Z. Um, and then after that, it will go do its, its uh, measurement routine, its mapping routine. Um, it'll go from corner to corner um, across the build plate. This one is set up for three uh, three dibs, and if you listen real closely, you'll hear the the end switch activating between each. Um, uh, there'll actually be two dabs or probes that it takes on the table, and uh, the first one's a, a fast one, kind of tells it where it is, and the second one is a very accurate slow one we have found very little difference in the uh how the speed affects the uh the probing but um you just can't get too accurate here so 
Um, one thing I'd like to also add is while it's probing, it goes into a, uh, and this depends on your, this depends on your uh, filament type. It goes into 150 degree Celsius uh, mode where it keeps the plastic that's on the tip mush in kind of a mush as it comes down and does its dab it will uh, kind of push it out of the way um, and there's a, a, some increments of you'll need to change in there with your filament change so depending what you're using it's really easy to change it's something you uh, change in the G code and then save it to EEPROM you can do that right on the screen of your stock CR10 um, as it goes through the last few probes here, coming across the back, it will go into what we call a, um, a print state. In other words, the, the tip will heat up you know, to your print temperature, whatever that's, uh, whatever that's set at in your factory file or in your EEPROM, in the G-code. Uh, there's various ways of setting it. So you'll see this. This is all done in real time, so you get a, a real good view of what is really happening here. Um, add about two minutes of warm-up time to this. And we're just gonna... We're just gonna wait here till it comes up. The next step is where it will do the tip uh, wipe across the front and then it goes into the print uh, this one has no offsets set into it the tip actually offsets forward a few millimeters so it gets pretty close to the edge of the front end of, edge of the table i haven't set that uh, the y offset yet in this you can get away with it this way but you'll see it um, it's a little bit close to the clip in the front i, I have my clip set up in the corner for this we're uh, actually the reason I did this was we're testing various tips right now uh, I also wanted to bring to your attention while this is doing it, it uh, as it was warming up and started to ooze a strip out of the out of the tip and right now it's going to clean that it's going to go across the table and clean that off this is maybe a stage at which you want to pay attention uh, to it if it uh, breaks that piece off you may want to uh, be ready with some hemostats or a a clipper or something to just kind of pull that out of the if you have a uh, if it deposits at where your print is going to be uh, we don't have that problem very often every once in a while it will do that but it's something to pay attention to right now it's laying down the brim uh, and this is another thing if you especially when it is um, that'll give you a good idea of whether your offset is correct and um, the, once again, the filament has a lot to do with uh, each filament. It's going to be a little different, maybe. Um, I use hairspray because when I'm laying down the the fine supports, um, the real tiny supports, you run a risk of uh, of those coming up in in this part of the print. So um, I use hairspray. It depends on what your build plate is made out of. I think. Um, how you normally would treat your build plate is how you would treat it for this also. It's really no different. It just, uh, just lays down a real consistent layer at this point. I also wanted to add at this time that uh, this one is set up with the E3D hot end. Um, and your hot end holder is included when you purchase one of these. It's built right into the system, so um, there's no additional uh, cost for a hot end, uh, which you can kind of take out of the equation if you're shopping for um, something to hold your E3D in place. Um, and then we're working on, actually we just finished it up, and um, we're just packaging it at this point, a uh, hot end holder for the stock CR10. And uh, of course, the Micro Swiss uh, fits the same, uh, will fit that same fixture, uh, but it'll be the uh, outward appearance of the machine will be exactly the same. You'll use the same fans, the same fangs, the same uh, front fan cover, 
It was all designed to be universal to fit uh, either one of those systems. Uh, we call this the uh, A uh, Stinger and the system with the hot end holder for the stock machine and the micro swiss is called the B version or we like to refer to it in, in the factory with kind of a little uh, tongue in cheek it's the B sting this would be the A sting so um, when you place the order um, just so you know what you're you're getting uh, with the two systems and they also come two ways they come with the, what you see in front of you they come semi-assembled in a kit form or we call it a short kit which consists of the main uh, CR10 chassis and you'll get STL files for your single uh, 5015 fan and all the rest of the parts that you'll need uh, to complete uh, a complete system uh, less the uh, covers and, and uh, fans you see above. Like, I'd like to also add that if you look in the upper right hand corner of the cover you'll see the uh, CR10 end switch up there. Uh, we have a mount uh, for and we sell the inductive switches, the 8 millimeter induction switch and it comes with a metal plate that you'll attach to the top of the chassis uh, to, uh, for the inductive sensor to sense. These are very accurate. Uh, contact the sales desk if you're interested in this. Uh, may not be on the website right away, but just know that that's available. And um, also brackets for if you have a capacitive system or an inductive system, uh, we can set you up with the STL file. Uh, you can uh, add that to your system if you wish. Well, that just about wraps it up guys. Um, I showed you the Stinger. Uh, I'd like to announce we have a, another model. We've just finished it up last night. It's the B model uh, to accompany the A model which is uh, for the E3D products. The B model is for your stock CR10 hot end holder and for the micro Swiss hot end holder. Um, just a few things about this. Um, I, I would say this is probably the most important product you can add to your CR10 to enhance not only your printer but your printing experience. If you're serious like I am and passionate about your 3D printing this takes all the screwing around away from it. You don't have to stand there wait for it to heat up go through the ritual of with the paper of leveling your bed or anything. Um, you don't have to do offsets like you do with some of the other capacitive systems. Uh, very simple to set up. You get the wiring harness with it. It's really plug and play. A couple little, uh, you offset the distance of your tip away from the table, but um, once you set that, until unless you change out your hot end or do something drastic to the design of your table, you're good to go. I've had these on my table for months and uh, they're very trustworthy. I can walk away from it and know that my print is going to turn out perfect every time. That first layer is perfect. And uh, that's really what you need for a perfect print every time. So uh, once again, my name is Dave Ashenbrenner. I really appreciate you coming here and checking out my video. If you want to get a hold of me, have any questions, my email is technical at 3dprinttoform.com. And thanks again, guys. My name is Dave Ashenbrenner. Thank you.